Hi dudes, I thought I would just go really big. I'm going to show you from start to finish the entire process of creating a mini boss. So although I'm going to be creating one of my specific mini bosses, this guy right here, I will be explaining things as I go so you will learn underlying principles that you can then apply to creating your own dudes. And I require that you send me videos of your own creations, by the way. Okay, thanks. The first thing I want to do, just to get out of the way, some pre prerequisite stuff. I'm not actually turning this on, I'm just opening it. And I'm going to ignore status effects. That's one way to prevent hackers crashing your game with certain types of crashes. It's not like a total solution to that, but anyway. We don't want any equip load. We want to have no clip available just in case we need it. And I'm going to give myself infinite stamina and mana. Anytime you see stuff that's zero or one, zero means off, of course, one means on. I know you knew that though. No goods consumed, sure. I also like to increase the lock-on range and the timer on when your lock-on deactivates. If you have ranged attacks, that's very useful. So let's start out by just creating the crazy look of this guy. One of the things you'll want to do on your mini bosses is mess with the body proportions a little bit just to give your boss that unique look. The whole idea, in my opinion, of a mini boss is to create something that looks like how does that even belong in the game, right? So we're going to go here. Now you can increase your head size indefinitely, but your body not so much. If you go too high, it kind of distorts you. Kinda. A little bit but if you've ever seen a guy running around that's like super buff this is how you do it you just have to be not go too overboard and keep it looking natural in the case of this boss though my body is going to be invisible well my actual body I'm going to go to helpers highlighted last weapon highlighted and I'll be putting this on armor later but we have to do it this way for now. And I'm going to just pick a weapon. You know what these two do if you've seen my first uh, introduction to modding spells. And the first thing I'm going to do is set up my lava feet. And we're going to put an effect ID on effect on self. In particular, I need an effect ID that allows me to tag a behavior ID to it. We have a limited number of those, and I also need a behavior ID or a, an effect ID that goes on forever, because we don't want to keep activating the lava over and over by doing it some other way. And it turns out we have just the thing for this. If you apply this in the Ring City, you'll actually get those uh, crystals on your back, but it's fine for us. Which brings us to the Effect Finder. First of all, to find stuff, we want to check this and check this. Memory View, Control G on your keyboard, type Effect. Now, an effect ID is can be almost anything. There are thousands and thousands of effect IDs in the game. A weapon buff is activated by an effect ID. Lots of visual stuff is. And basically everything. R1 is its own effect ID. See that one pop up there? This grabs them as they are activated in real time in the game. It can be easy to grab the wrong one when you have lots of crap going on so you have to be careful 
There's even an effect ID for starting walking and a separate one for stopping. So you could actually make your lava just activate when you're walking or sprinting. But what I'm going to do is grab that effect ID that I just put on the weapon. Obviously it's this one. Control C to copy and we're going to go to the effect helper. Which of course is where we modify and spice up effects. Now here we have where we put our behavior ID. When I said there's a limited number of effect IDs that have a moddable behavior ID, that is because if this says negative one, you cannot use it, you cannot change it. But we used an effect ID that does have a moddable behavior ID. That means we can change this to anything in the behavior IDs list. So there's our lava. But I also have a lot of other visual things going on. And most of my visual things are effect IDs. So here's how we chain together a ton of effect IDs. In the effect helper we have two options here. Replace special effect ID and this one here. Any effect ID you put here will basically spam itself indefinitely for the duration of the effect. And this one will sp not spam it, but it will activate the effect ID one time at the conclusion of the effect. So if I wanted some effect to go off when I'm swinging my sword, I would use the effect helper to find the effect associated with R1, and I would put my desired effect here. But this can have really uh, crazy c consequences because it does spam it so fast. Which is where this comes in handy sometimes. But I want to ensure all my effects are going all the time. So we're going to use this. And while watching the effect finder, I'm going to put this effect ID that makes my poise. It's a little bit of a white glow there, but the reason I'm using it is because it makes it so I can't be staggered. A giant rock monster should not be able to be staggered by your dagger. So which one was that exactly over on the effect finder? Appears to be this one, right? We'll plug that into the effect finder or the effect helper. And no, actually, this is just the lava, so it'll be the next one down. That was the one I was already on. And this particular effect ID kind of triggers an additional effect ID. That's why there's two things going on. But this is the first one. So now we're looking at the effect helper for the white aura that doesn't make a stagger. Going down here, and we just repeat this process, chaining together these effects to create all of our visual effects. So I want some additional sparks on my body. There's an effect ID for that. It's this one. And see those nice uh, embers going off. And because we were paying attention, the second we activated it, we know for a fact it was this one. And we're just repeating this, chaining these together. What else do I want? Well, of course I need to be invisible. And I need Havel's weapon art to create the rocks. So this technique alone can allow you to make your guy really unique looking just by chaining together a bunch of visual effects. 
And now I'm going to return to where I can alter my appearance. And we can go crazy now since my actual body is invisible. And one of my little secrets, this helm in particular messes with this Havel thing. I've created the illusion of being the size of an actual boss. Whoa. Not sure I want to go that crazy. So that's good enough for now. But I also want a lot of fire on me. So let's return to the process we were doing where we where we chain together effects. And I wasn't paying attention, but our next one is actually this one. And I'm actually going to do the embering effect. Here's a cool fire thing though. I don't know, I might want to use this. It's pretty cool. But here's the alternative. I think I'll do it this way just because I haven't before. I know it's a little over the top, but whatever. And to make things easier on our eyes, I'm just going to pull the camera back a little bit. So now I think we have the visual aspect done, and we can start working on our crazy spells and offensive ability. So I think I have the visual component more or less done. But a boss needs to have a high health pool instead of modifying your health directly. I like to do it this way, last armor highlighted. Pick a random piece of armor that you're going to be wearing. And here in defense, I believe this number indicates the amount of damage that gets through the armor. So 93% of all the damage they do gets through this armor. So I'll change that to give him a more bossy health pool or the illusion of a health pool. I think I'll make him weak to magic. Or weaker. Too bad there's not a water type in this game. <laughs> 